Can Christians speak things into existence? That's what we'll discuss in today's video. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to The Complete Christian. My name is Chidi. Um, if you're new to the channel, you know what to do. Please take our time to subscribe, like, share, comment and all that good stuff. Um, so let's get into today's video. Um, so like you can see in the title, so the, the topic is, you know, can Christians speak things into existence? So, you know, we've heard a lot of, you know, people say that, you know, preachers and everything, but we need to check if um, it's actually scriptural for us to, to do that. So the, the place that, um, the scripture that um, a lot of people who claim to have that power to speak things into existence is usually um, Romans chapter 4 verse 17 where it says you know calling those things that be not as though they were and most times when they preach that they just run with it and they're not actually taking time to read the whole thing and you know explain it um, you know go deep into it so you know what we do on this channel we like to read the scriptures in context you know so that that helps us to understand the bible um what the bible is saying you know because most of the time like i always say if you take out a verse and read the verse it can mean anything but when we, if we want to understand god's will what god says and you know what the bible says we need to read it in context and read it from the eyes of the person who actually wrote it not the way you want to interpret it that's the best way to interpret the bible so to help us understand, you know, that um, scripture, um, let's start reading that um, the scripture, Romans chapter chapter four. So the verse is seventeen, but let's to get get the the whole context. Let's start reading from verse thirteen. So that's that's going to give us, you know, a good context. So this is what it says: Abraham and his descendants received the promise that they would get the whole world so that they will inherit the world. But Abraham did not receive that promise because he followed the law. He did not follow, um, receive the promise because he followed the law. He received that promise because he was right with God through his faith. So he was justified through faith and made right with God. That was why he received the promise because he had faith. Verse 14, if people could get God's promises by following the law, then faith is worthless. God's promise to Abraham is worthless because the law can only bring God's anger on those who disobey it. But if there is no law, then there is no nothing to disobey. Right? So it's just talking about God's promises to Abraham. Um, and that he believed it. He trusted God that he will give the promise. And the promise here is about the coming Messiah who is going to save us. If you want to get clarity on that, I have a video about the blessing of Abraham. So check that video out and that will help you understand the blessing of Abraham, what God promised. So let's carry on. Um, verse 16, it says, So people get what God promised by having faith. That's how we get the promise of God. Um, remember, the, this promise here is the promise of our salvation through Christ. Um, this happens so that the promise can be a free gift. So this promise is a free gift. Remember, the book of Romans says um, that we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man boast. Um, yeah, the, the scripture tells us that, um, the, that um, our salvation is a free gift, um, so we can't actually buy it. It's, it's a free gift from God, so that's also, you know, concurring with that. So, it says, and if, if the promise is a free gift, then all of Abraham's people will, will get the pro that promise. The promise is not just for those who live under the law of Moses. It is, for, it is for all who live with faith 
as Abraham did. He is the father of all of us. Right? So if we have faith like Abraham did, as he was trusting God for the for the, his, the, the Messiah that will come through his lineage, which is Christ, if we also have that same faith on Christ, we will get the same promise, which is our salvation and everlasting life. Um, and then that's when the scripture, um, the, the verse 17, after we've read that, that's when the 17 says, as the scriptures say, I have made you a father of many nations. This is true because God, the one Abraham believed, listen to this, God, the one Abraham believed, the God who gives life to the dead and speaks of things that don't yet exist as if they were real. So another scripture, another version, um, King James will say, calling those things that be not as though they were. So um, that is the, the, the scripture that people use. So if, even if we you know, moved on, move on a little bit, he says, there was no hope that Abraham would have children, but Abraham believed God and continued to hope. And that is why he became the father of nations. As God has told him, you will have many descendants. So basically, um, the one who called those things that be not is God not Abraham. So you can't actually use yourself and put yourself in there to say, oh, because Abraham spoke this you know, into being, then I will speak into being. If you actually read, you take your time to read the scripture, it actually says that it's God who gives life to the dead and speak um, of those things that don't yet exist as of the area. So if we remember as well that the Bible says that the body of Abraham was dead and he didn't count his body that was dead, but he trusted God. So God, this scripture here just says that God who gives life to the dead, the body of Abraham that was dead, God gave it life to be able to have children. And then from his lineage came the promise, which is Christ for our salvation. So, and he says, God who gave, gives life to the dead, Abraham's body was dead. He gave it life and speaks of things that don't yet exist. So the child that will bring the salvation to mankind has not yet come. He does not exist naturally. He has not yet come. He's not, he's not, he hasn't been born yet. Remember, Christ is the word made flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. So he hasn't been born yet, but God spoke, called those things that be not as though they were. So the coming of Christ, God prophesied it to Abraham and he believed it in faith. So they, that's basically what that you know, scripture says. So it doesn't say that us Christians can speak things into existence and use the power of our words and all that stuff. Um, so that's not, um, as we can read it from that scripture, that's not what he's saying. He's not saying that you can speak things into existence. He says God calls those things that be not as though they were. God is the one who speaks things into existence, not us. So, so that's the video for today. Um, I don't know. Tell me what you think. Have you been taught that in church? Have you learned that in church? Leave a comment in the comment section and tell me what you you know what you've been taught. Um, and if you have a disagreement as well from the video, you know, leave a comment and we, you know, have a conversation down there. Um, so that's basically the video. So, you know, um, please take out time to like the video if you like it and share to everybody, you know, who you think will benefit from this. Obviously, if you, uh, you know, if you haven't subscribed, please do that quickly because that will help, you know, our channel. That will help the, our videos for YouTube to share them around. So like I always say, you know, at the end of my videos, fear God and keep his commandments for that is the whole duty of man. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. God bless you. Thank you very much. Bye.